Welcome back. We're Sean for one last time in Face Noir, and then we'll be back to Jack. Looks like we're gonna get to talk to Professor Zindler the and find out offices in room. the truth about uh, Emily. It was more difficult than I thought. Unless he's already dead, because that's also a possibility. When I enter in the office, I find the professor. Nope, he's alive. You finally made it, he says. You're finally here. I know everything from this recording. Are you the man who's supposed to save us? The answer is simple. No. Oh, John. Find the professor, kill him, and get back what he took from us. These are the orders. Black Lily's orders. Get back what he took from us. I think about documents, cash, or some strange object. But not this. A girl? I have to kidnap a kid? She's Emily's age. My sister's age when she disappeared, and I couldn't protect her. A couple of voices, I guess what's left of me conscience, start to fight in me head. A girl. I can't give a girl to Black Lily. The voices win. I take the girl and I head straight for the entrance, taken a different way. I wasted some time and the Turk will be suspicious. He might come in the museum. I'm not wrong. McLean is taking too long. Something is not right. Oscar, you keep guard here. I'm going to check whether everything is going as planned. Mm. Damn it, the Turk got suspicious of me taking so long. It'll take him a while to figure out what happened. Better use this opportunity to get out of here. Nice. I don't think it would... If I hide behind the crate... I can do without. There are some rusty. I don't need. Good. Now I just have to figure out. How I'm gonna take the car. So he came with. Um, the Turk. He came with. Um, I don't like saying the Turk, I just mean that's the character's name in this, but uh, he came with him, and I guess he came with Marzetti and Oscar. They left the car unlocked. I'll just b Run away, Sean. Run away as far as possible. You've done some pretty dumb things in your life, but this beats them all. Standing up to Black Lily to protect a girl? It's this type of sentimentality that'll get you killed. But maybe it's better that way. A man once told me it's not how you live, but how you die that says who you are. And I don't want to die a murderer. Maybe you shouldn't have shot that professor then. So we don't get an explanation on Emily then. Jack. You finally come to Dan, that's, that's the second time I've ended up on the floor today. I should start taking boxing lessons. What are we going to do now? We're trapped. And the plane will leave soon. We need to get out of here. Jack? Victoria? 
Yeah, it's me. You should have followed my advice and never left that storeroom. I have a hard time following the advice of someone who first ties me up and then uses me as a punching bag. You know that wasn't my idea. Right from the beginning, I tried to make sure you wouldn't get involved. When this is all over, remind me to give you a box of chocolates as a thank you. Jack, I know all this seems wrong to you. Wrong? Betting money on a lame horse is wrong. Kidnapping a girl to sacrifice her to some phantom divinity is crazy. Jack, neither of us can stop the destiny of this girl. Destiny? Destiny? You keep repeating this word, as if in the name of destiny you could commit the most atrocious crimes. As hard as it might be to believe, I'd like to let that girl go too. She's certainly not responsible for this situation, but it's our duty to make sure that she fulfills the purpose for which she was born. The purpose for which she was born? And since when does Black Lily help girls fulfill their destiny? Black Lily? Do you really think I work for Black Lily, Jack? No? So what is it? A special partnership? A part-time job to round out your salary? Jack, Black Lily is just a pawn we use to get the girl here in New York. It's them working for us. And who is this us? The less you know, Jack, the better it is for you. Victoria, who's behind this? I'm sorry, Jack. Maybe one day we'll meet again and I'll tell you everything. But I have to go now. I have a plane to catch. I gave specific orders that you and your friend be released after I leave. But don't try to follow us. It'd be pointless. Victoria, wait. Goodbye, Jack. Victoria! This whole thing is ridiculous. I don't care if it's ridiculous or not. That girl is not leaving this airport. I'll stop her, even if it's the last thing I do. It's closed. It's pointless. The padlock is on the app. Hmm. From the signs on these tanks. And what should I use them? Yes. It doesn't make s No, it doesn't make any I don't know. what am I doing? And now let's get out. Finally he uses his gun Red, for something. Take cover. Now we're Greg, back where we were at the start of the game. From leaving. What are you going to do? I don't know yet. You get the car. It's hidden in the trees near the entrance. The keys are on the dash. Okay. Keep the engine running. We need to leave as soon as I get the girl. Jack. Yes? Be careful. There's no time to be careful. Not this time. Greta, go. And now we get to see him get shot by Marzetti. It's too late. It looks like you're too late, Del Nero. What are you doing here? Why aren't you on that plane? I hate traveling. I'm not the kind of guy who crosses the desert on a camel. I prefer the comfort of the big city. Moreover, had I left, I would have missed the chance to deal with you. You made me look ridiculous in the eyes of the organization, and I don't have any intention of letting you get away with it. And what do you want to do? Kill me? I can see it on your face that you've never shot anyone. You're not that kind of guy. You send your men to do your dirty work. You're right. I've never shot anyone. Even though many men and women died because I ordered it. How brave. But you know, there's a first time for everything. I'm dead. There is nothing else I can do. Emily, Greta, I'm sorry. I couldn't protect you. It's over. I'm dead. Emily, Greta, I'm sorry that I couldn't protect you. Yeah, we heard that. I let myself get knocked off by the first idiot that came around. Tomorrow, I'll be one of the many names that fill the newspaper's crime report. Or maybe not even that. Maybe they'll just throw my body in the East River, or in some dump. No one will realize I'm gone. Except for that stingy Slavonsky when he'll come to collect the rent. Nice life. Who knows what kind of place this is? I only see strange white lights in front of me. Is this heaven? <sighs> Let's not kid ourselves. Heaven isn't the place for a washed-up detective with a drinking problem. It's got to be hell. 
At least I'll see a lot of my old friends. Oh, shit. I thought hell would be different. You know? Fire, flames, strange creatures with horns. There's just water here. Water and strange hanging wires. What the heck? A huge clock. I know I should be surprised. It seems to have stopped. The hands aren't moving. So you'll be able to... Maybe rewind time and get a second ch chance at the plane of Marzetti. Oh, let's go this way. So he's like in a limbo kind of situation. A pub in the middle of hell. Hey, there's Sean. I'm starting to like this. I'm assuming it's Sean. There's a guy. It must be Sean. Come on, it has to be. Jack, it's been ages. Sean? Right. Haven't seen you for a while. What is this place? This is no place, and is nowhere. Am I dead? Yes, Jack. You're dead. Like me. Well, if this is hell, it isn't too bad. True. The booze is free, and you don't have to worry about your liver. You're already dead. I'm sure you have a few questions for me. Ask what you want, but I'm warning you. We don't have much time. I didn't think that time would be a problem here. It counts more than you can imagine. Come on, Jack. Ask what you want to know. Why did you lie at Valenti's trial? I thought you'd ask me that. I spent a year in the clink for that. I think you owe me. You're right. The answer is simple. The most obvious one. Money. You sold out for money? Right. A police's salary wasn't enough to pay me old man's debts. He loved to play them horses, and he was in deep with the Valenti family. That good for nothing. He was a bad father, and an even worse gambler. He bet it all on the horses, and never won once. We were at the track the day my sister disappeared. Too focused on watching that damned horse that no one would have placed a buck on to realize that his daughter wasn't there anymore. My old man. A man that the world would have been better off without. He racked up so many debts that I would have needed two lives to get the money together. And Valenti knew it. That's why he offered me a solution to the whole problem. Both his kids had been arrested for booze trafficking. The judge gave him a year in the slammer each. But those two brats spoiled by their mob father wouldn't have lasted a week in prison. Valenti's idea was simple. I was supposed to get his kids out of this mess by saying that I was the one who committed their crimes. I would have been discharged from the police, and I would have served their sentence. In exchange, me old man's debts would have been like they'd never happened. But I didn't know your name would come up at the trial, Jack. You were supposed to be left out of this whole mess. Why haven't you ever told me this story? The week after the trial, me old man died. According to the police, some crazy guy put a bullet in his back during a bar fight. Funny coincidence, especially considering that the day before, a guy tried to stab me in Harlem for no reason. Arturo Valente wanted me dead. His kids were free. He got what he wanted, and killing me was the easiest way to cover his tracks. Had I told you this story, he would have tried to kill you too. I decided to leave New York and move to Los Angeles, thinking that I could leave everything behind me. But you can't forget your past. No one wanted a corrupt ex-police officer underfoot. It was impossible to find a job. Until one day, when some fat guy comes up to me in a bar and offers me a job. I'd have to kill a guy who was in Los Angeles on business. A guy comes out of nowhere and offers you a job as a hitman. What kind of story is this? I thought the same thing. The fat guy showed me a photograph of the future victim, sure that I'd accept. Oh, and it was Valenti. Right. I did. The guy in the photograph was Arturo Valenti. Because of him, I didn't have a family or a job anymore. And the only thing I had left was a thirst for revenge that only an Irishman can understand. I did the job, and so I started working for Black Lily. Good story, huh? Maybe I'll write a book about it one day. I wonder if there are any publishers around here. Maybe I'll ask around. What am I doing here? You're trying to understand. Understand what? What destiny is. Destiny? I'm just a private detective who spends half of what he makes on booze, and the other half to pay the rent for an office that looks like a dump. What destiny do you think I might have? I'm not talking about your destiny, Jack. 
But the girls. She's just a little girl, kidnapped by a wacky archaeologist from who knows where. So, you really think that Professor Zendler was nuts? You think that those dreams you had were due to exhaustion? That it was only a series of coincidences that brought you here? A coincidence that your friend with the red hair knew Marsetti? A coincidence that the owner of the dive you live in is the same guy who hosted Necklace. Jack, that girl can change the future. If she could really do what you say, don't you think she'd have done something to avoid all this? I don't know how it works. I kill people. I don't study ancient prophecies. But I do know one thing. If you're here, you've been given a chance. What are you talking about? Coming here, you must have seen some sort of floating clock. Yes, too peculiar not to notice it. That's your life, Jack. And if you're here, the hands have stopped. But you can go back. You mean, I can be resuscitated? I'll be walking around New York like one of those zombies from horror novels? It doesn't work like that. When you go back, you won't remember this place, and you'll do the same things you already did. Great. I can't live, but I can die as often as I want. Right. Or maybe something could change. Destiny could give you a second chance. How? You won't know until you try. Goodbye, Sean. Goodbye, Jack. Hmm. Well, let's see what happens. It seems. Back we go. And what do you want to do? Kill me? I can see it on your face that you've never shot anyone. You're not that kind of guy. You send your men. To You're right. I've never shot anyone. How brave. But you know. Hmm. It was destiny. How is it possible that I'm still alive? Sean's bottle of rye stopped the bullet. Who oh. would have thought? Saved by a movie cliche. Sean, it looks like I owe you my life. You're a lucky guy. You're the one they call the Turk. And you're the detective they're all talking about. Are you here to avenge the death of your friend, Marzetti? My friend, Marsetti? I hope you're joking. I wanted him dead more than you did. I never liked him. The way he treats women is awful, and his joints are as disgusting as the people who go there. So what do you want from me? You're more important than you believe, and I need you for my plans. What plans? I don't have to tell you. What makes you think I'll go along with your plans? I'll take you to the girl. Why would you do that? Let's say I have an interest in throwing a monkey wrench in Miss Diaz's plans. I see. So what do you want to do? Are you coming with me? When are we leaving? As soon as my man convinces your red-headed friend to come with us. What does Greta have to do with all this? You're all involved. Even the most insignificant extra can change the plot of a whole film, De Niro. And I don't want that to happen. I'm a perfectionist. I've already seen your perfectionism in action. You'll have time to complain later on, Danero. We have a plane to catch now. Haha. Ha. I hope you don't have problems with the heat, because where we're going, they say the sun could kill you. Traveling with you? I think the sun is going to be the least of my problems. I'm starting to understand why Miss Diaz is so fond of you. I've known you for five minutes, and I like you already. I hope you aren't upset that the feeling isn't mutual. Danero. Forget everything that you think you know about this story. You don't know anything. You've never seen the dark face of a god. The sun is already high when we take off. The plane flies into the sun, and the enormous ball of fire envelops the plane until every bit of its metal fuselage disappears. <laughs> they die. For a moment, I think that that's exactly where we're headed. Going to challenge the sun, immense and unreachable. Considered a god since ancient times, but before takeoff I glanced at the flight plan and I found out that our destination is slightly closer The city of Damascus Syria. That's where we're headed Huh
Okay, so that's where the sequel will take place, I guess. If there is a sequel, because this game is from 2013, I think. <laughs> so they don't really explain a whole lot about a lot of the underlying stuff going on in the game. It's kind of, um, weak that they just plop the time mechanic right th there at the end. Like, if they did make the sequel that they planned on making, it would be interesting um, to see how that mechanic would uh, be utilized. But since there probably isn't going to be a sequel after all, it just is this weird hanging thread. So, I don't know. The game itself was alright though, it's just the story I... I it leaves too many things unraveled by ho by trying to play everything up for a sequel that they had no idea whether they'd actually be able to make it or not. So it's not a Duckman situation where they throw in a wrench right at the end, it's just more of a, um... It's like if you only got 12 episodes of a season of 24 and they said, Alright, see you later, bye. Anyway, that's Face Noir. Uh, grab a snack and we'll be back in 10 minutes with another game.